I learned that in spoken English, the number 17 and 70 are sometimes confused because they sound so similar. When carefully enunciated, they differ in which syllable is stress. 17 or 70. Somebody actually wrote this. Thanks, Wikipedia. Oh, and it's also the atomic number of chlorine. Thanks, Walter White. I learned that Bobby Brown, Sex Pistols, AFI, Jimmy World, Jethro Tull, Mandy Moore, Smashing Pumpkins, Kings of Leon, and many others have a song named 17. Today, I went to a filmmaking course. I was scheduled for a couple, maybe a month or two ago. Um, I was supposed to go yesterday, but I was at the hospital uh, taking care of Lucy, of course. And today, we I, I missed some stuff on story that was really good, but a couple people filled me in. But today, we talked about documentary filmmaking and ways to put your... Uh, interviewee at ease and here are some of my notes um, some of the directors of photography that were there were uh, uh, Brian Sullivan and TC Christensen he's kind of famous here in Utah and maybe a few other places I'm not sure one of the things I found interesting is um, as a filmmaker sometimes you have to interview people that kind of have a lot of nerves or they freeze on camera and um, I was going to type these up as like text on the, on the screen. I'm just going to hold this as still as possible so you can read it. But here are some things that I learned. You know, sometimes it's easier to sit in their chair for a second to see how intimidating it can be. And you can see if you can back off some of the cameras, a few things, pull back a bit, let them breathe. Um, maybe if you're filming kids, hide the camera. Um, a love instead of boom. Sometimes the boom can be a little bit intimidating. Uh, when you're trying to get to know somebody, or if they, they're really not kind of opening up, use words like favorite. Like if you're talking to like a trucker or something like that, you say, tell us your favorite experience on the road. And in that moment, it kind of incites their passion. Uh, sometimes you use fake roles or hand signals to communicate with the DP to record. So, But, but I'm, what I mean by fake roles is just like be talking with them. Say basically... Tell them that you haven't started recording yet and just kind of signal the DP, like maybe if you take your hat off or something and get him to just start recording just so you can get that authentic interview. Uh, use words like share and conversation rather than interview. Sometimes it makes them put them more at ease. And when you're all done, a good thing to ask is, what have I missed? You know, sometimes it gives them total control and or anything you'd like to share. And, are, and sometimes even ask your crew, does anyone else have anything to say that might benefit the story? These are some things that a few people might know, but already I knew a good good amount of these. But, you know, it was always a good refresher. Um, everyone, most filmmakers have probably done a good amount of interviews in their life. Um, but the main thing that I got out of it is just to get the person at ease. Make them feel you know like your friend some people actually have to spend like months with people i know some people have done like documentaries on the mennonites up in canada and a few things uh, we talked a lot about that and there are many different ways but the main goal here is just to get the most authentic authentic answers as possible from your subject and have them add to your story so one of the guys in my training is a dp named brian utah sullivan He's got a book out called Cinema Intellect. It's an essay. I thought it was free, but he's selling it for, uh, let's see, just two ninety nine. dollars I mean, it's 3 bucks, but it's about 44 pages that talks a lot about. Uh, I haven't read it yet, I, so I don't know what it's about. I tried to get Brian on camera, but he had to go. Uh, he had to go scout out a project or something. The next class was very interesting. It was by Matt Jansen. He's a... Uh, Let's see, it says VP of Production and Development at Lionsgate. Um, he's one of six people that hears pitches and approves movies to be made. And uh, his current baby right now, as you may have heard of it, it's coming out, is The Hunger Games. He was responsible, he's part of the team that put together that package of the director and all that for The Hunger Games. Anyways, he talked about pitches and pitching and pitch meetings and the do's and don'ts. So I'm going to share with you the do's and don'ts for my notes. So these are some of the do's he said. Be honest and be honest with yourself. So be completely honest about what this is going to cost, what, what's it going to be, how the movie's going to start, and everything. 
Uh, the second is know your audience, who your audience is. Don't try to shoot for an everyone audience. Cater your resume to whoever you're applying to. So if you're going to Lionsgate, you need to know who these guys are, who you're going to talk to. And when you give this pitch, you need to know exactly what, what they are looking for. And then um, the do have a concept that they can instantly recognize or intrigued by. You know, concept, the hook, you know, it's point of view, execute, execution, you know. The point of view is just your execution. There are many different stories that are recycled. It's usually the execution that makes, you know, makes it all worth it. And then the log line needs to be a summary of the concept, not the plot. And have a, you know, a unique point of view. What he says here is be specific. Don't be annoying with the details. Like you go into incredible details, but you need to understand your story. You need to understand what is it, what about it is important, what is going on, and what do you want to make your people, your audience feel. Here are the don'ts when pitching. Don't ever wing it. you got to have a plan. Don't rely on other people to give you the benefit of the doubt because, you know, these people are looking to spend, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to millions of dollars on this product, and they're just looking to see if you are going to make them money or not. If you've got something good and, and they want to buy it, they're going to buy it, but... Don't rely on them. Just don't don't say to them like, oh, uh, you know, just give me a chance or, you know, it, it all makes sense if we start putting it together. You need to just rely on other, uh, not to rely on other people to give you the benefit of the doubt. You need to, and don't apologize up front. Also, we asked him what is the length, normal length of a pitch and and such, and he basically said, you know, the length of the pitch is determined by what the story requires. If you have to explain a few things, you know, give it the time it needs. Don't be dull, though, as uh, that quote in the beginning of this piece is going to say. The cardinal sin is dullness. And it depends, and it depends on who's pitching as well, because, you know, Steve Jobs could captivate an audience for hours where, you know, someone like myself maybe can only hold you for five minutes. But um, you have to work on your pitch and work on your presentation skills uh, using concept art, sizzle trailers. What a sizzle trailer is, is, you know, something that somebody takes like footage from other videos and tries to put a trailer of this next movie that's coming out um, based on this script. But yeah, those are a few things that I learned. So, though, so, he, uh, so he elaborated on it a bit more. But I mean, those are some of the things that I got from my notes. Sorry if they're a bit jumbled, but, and I even asked him to be on camera, but uh, he, I think, politely fully declined. He said maybe next time he said he was, he was busy as well. So, you know, these Hollywood guys. Just got news from my wife that uh, my little Lucy is going to be coming home today, which is nice. Uh, they're going to be packing up her stuff right now. Um, it's, it's going to be good. Uh, she... Apparently, they're going to switch out her G-Tube with a J-Tube and keep her on a continuous feed. I'm not sure what a J-Tube is, so if anybody wants to explain it, that'd be great. My wife will probably explain it tonight, but for the most part, there you go. I learned that today. It's great news. Guy in a chariot. Guy in a chariot. So Lucy's on continuous oxygen, which is going to cause a little bit of a problem because we're going to be in Disneyland, uh, hopefully leaving Tuesday now. We were going to leave tomorrow, but Disneyland, we're going to have to have her on connected to oxygen a long time. And I've been racking my brain trying to figure out what tanks need to come. And I've been on the phone with a couple guys from Intermountain Home Care of what actually needs to be done to take care and make sure Lucy has the right amount of oxygen for those maybe eight days we're going to be gone. Anyways, this is what I learned. So here's the M tank. And with that, for a liter, you get one liter. Oh, come on, focus for me. Focus one, you get 2.4 days. Where Lucy's is going to be one fourth, and she's got nine days on this big M tank. But we're not taking one of these to Disney. I just, why do you guys... That's a C tank, that size right there. And that'll get me how much? What were we saying? It was uh, 20. Yeah, 20, uh, 16 hours. It'll get me 16, 16 hours. hours. 16 yes. hours on this sea tank, and that's the smallest you got, right? Yeah, that's what we'll later. take. That's what we'll take in the park. And then this is the D, but you're not going to take that with you. We're not taking this, but the D will get me how many? Does uh, it say on the thing? Yes. Let's see. A quarter of a liter will do 23 hours. 23, 23 hours at a quarter. Which at a regular liter, how much is that? This is a. Let me get this 
thing out. This is an E tank. These are the ones that we'll be taking. Well, if you end up taking these instead of oh, the concentrator, okay. you might yeah. be the concentrator, the pediatric concentrator. Yeah. These ones will go on a quarter of a liter, 41 hours. 41 hours on a quarter of a liter. Plan on 35 just to be safe. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I just learned that you can actually get a concentrator. You don't need the big M tank that will take the oxygen in, or in the air and it'll purify it. That can go down to as low as an eighth of a liter. So. Yeah, we're probably going to use that for Disneyland to help Lucy. This is what the concentrators look like, and they make uh, oxygen, purified uh, oxygen, sort of. Yeah. They don't make it, technically. They, they, it con takes they it. concentrate it. <laughs> <laughs> so Jonathan and I had a long, interesting conversation about what to do to properly, um, properly sustain Lucy through Disneyland, and he's very helpful. So We have the goods. You do have the goods. Intermountain Home Care. So how long have you worked for Intermountain? I'm working on my third year. Third year? Third year, yeah. I worked there for three years as well. Yeah. I used to actually fill oxygen tanks, and yeah. it's funny that now I'm actually using them. Yeah. So. You never thought that was going to happen, did you? And where are you from? I just live here in Clinton. Oh, cool. Close by, yeah. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. All right, it looks like we're going to need six of these C tanks, and then that concentrator, and maybe one E, e tank to drive with. So that'll take care of Lucy for the for Disneyland. That's it. Sorry it was so long. But I uh, hope you were, you know, if you're a filmmaker, hope it informed you a lot, or I hope you fast forwarded through the long parts. Um, thanks for making it with me all the way, and yeah, have a good night.